Hi there, this is Eitan, and today I'm going to address uh, the topic of tactical knives or what is considered to be military used knife. Now, there are uh, a lot of information out there, and uh, um, companies that are dedicated tactical companies and uh, uh, makers that call their knives tactical, and nobody knows exactly what tactical means, and combat knives, and etc. Uh, etc. Et so, what I'm going to do today is try to give you my two cents on how I see. Uh, knives, folding knives that fit to use in a military and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna show you my collection I'm gonna show you what I think is fit and what I don't think is fit and you can take what you want from this video and make your own conclusion take it as an uh, advice ask question whatever you like I've been in the um, idea for several years and uh, this is what I think okay now couple of uh, basic uh, uh, assessment first the knives or the use that I'm talking about is for field units field units can be in an urban area or in the middle desert or in a jungle but they can encounter dirt gunk etc okay not in an office two the main use of a folding knife in the military in the 21st century is utility. No one can know what will be tomorrow or how combat will go and what you need to do and if you need to use it to, I don't know, to escape or protect yourself from someone. But most likely, uh, most soldiers in their life will use their knives, fixed blades or whatever for utility not for self-defense or assault or uh, anything and i hope it will remain like that but as i said nobody can predict the future nobody can know so it's it's also something you need to take under consideration so these are the stuff and another thing money budget is not an issue in this video because some people have enough money to buy a expensive model and some are not and i'm gonna mention two or three more models that are not in the video and i, I recommend them so let's go inside. Now, uh, I collect uh, US military knives from World War I till now. And we, the knife collector, the, the, the military knife collector, we divide military knives in several categories. One is uh, military knives that made in, uh, uh, by armies, I mean by other makers, but for the army because the army requested them. Those are the trench knife from World War One, the M. Uh, 1918 and uh, 1917, the USMC Mark II, uh, known as Kabar, uh, those were made. So those are one type of military knives. Another type are one that been adopted by uh, soldiers during use and were in civilian use, and they become military knives because historically many soldiers used them and uh, even some bought them. And also I add to that, um, uh, specialty knives that made for specialty units like divers and stuff like that by makers like Emerson okay so those knives are like the Gerber mark II in uh, the Vietnam War that were very popular the Randall most of them weren't issue knives and the SOG knives were specialty knives made for units so those become also a military knives and and uh, knives uh, that uh, purchased by uh, soldiers, okay, and become very, pop very popular, so people see them as a military knife. The third uh, group is um, something that makers define as a tactical knife or as a military knife. S and today, anyone can buy whatever he wants, but it's not considered as a genuine military item because if uh, Benchmade define uh, this uh, Presidio 2 as a tactical knife or military use knife, okay? And uh, some soldier, I don't know, like a few soldiers bought them and used them during the Iraq war or whatever, okay? So, uh, uh, not every bench made is considered a military item, but if it will be widely used and many will use them and you will have literature on that and etc it will be considered as a military item so only time can tell so tactical defined by maker is not guaranteed that it is a genuine military item but it can fit as a military knife 
as a definition. What I define, as I said uh, earlier, is you're gonna need to use it in the field. And some field, it can be wet environment, dry environment, but not only in the office. And most of the use is gonna be utility. And price is not an issue, so let's go and start. And I say what I think on every, every knife that I have, and if it will fit and if it will not. So let's start uh, with this one. Well, this one, uh, it's the Fortis uh, Viper, cost around uh, 240, I think, something like that. Uh, I don't find it fit for several reasons. One, the handle is slippery, although it has a good grip and it's easy to manipulate it with uh, gloves even. No problem, you can open it like that. Uh, it has bearings and uh, I don't like bearings in a um, dirty environment because bearings tend to get dirt and uh, to clean them or use them, uh, to clean them and maintain them, it's not as easy as, uh, as washers. And I think that uh, if I have a model with bearings and uh, another model without bearings and the, um, the variety is large, so I will pass on bearings. Some people will say, I don't care, I'll take bearings. It's not mine, I think this is not fit because of the bearings. Strider SMF, well, this is one of the kings here, the Aces, uh, it's very good, uh, it's very expensive, around 600, 500 US dollars, but the knife is just made for hard use because it's easy to grip it with gloves, without gloves, you have a lot of uh, places to grip and jimping, you have several of um, uh, holding position and choking position even with uh, large gloves. Uh, it's easy to open and it's very easy to maintain because it has over here washers uh, you need to take air pressure or nothing even if it's fall into the dirt air pressure even water and uh, then apply a bit of oil and it will work okay you don't need it fly out like uh, you know um, for fidgeting and the blade here is from stainless steel which is uh, also it's important people in the knife community say, ah, it's stainless, it's not strong, I want 3V. Uh, rust is not fun, okay? Especially when you have a million other stuff to do, from cleaning your weapon to get some sleep, rust is no fun. Ah, uh, and it's not way too much. And forget easy access because it's not deep carry. Socom Elite, Socom Elite uh, is hit and miss. Strike and miss. I don't know how you say the expression exactly. Why? Because <clears throat> a lot of thing in this knife is made for that use for what I consider is a good utility military use. It has a big blade, chunky blade. It's not the best cutter, but uh, easy access with the fingers and good grippiness. And um, <laughs> you know, it says over here those. Uh, this part is like a semi guard and everything on point, but bearings. Uh, as I said earlier, if I have a knife, this one costs 300 US dollars. If I have a knife without bearings, I'll take it. Uh, I know that this knife is extremely popular in the knife community. I don't know how many military personnel in the field actually use this. I guess that there are a lot and they don't mind about the, the bearings. And it's really, it's okay, just me. And, and this knife is fit for it. I just... The bearing issue is, uh, if I had uh, $300, probably won't be it because I can find something with that. Cold Steel Code 4, and I'm gonna say in one breath, also the Recon 1, I don't have one right now, one, Recon 1, but those are one of the best uh, military use knives, why? Uh, one, they're not too expensive, around 100 US dollars. Two, uh, they have a pocket clip that uh, gives you enough of the knife to pull it out. Um, three, they have a very strong lock. Okay, the <coughs> trad lock is very, is extremely strong. Uh, three, uh, the blade is well made from uh, stainless steel S35VN. You can get dirt gunk over here. You can wash it under a hose <laughs> and put some oil. The washers are Teflon, but I don't care. <laughs> and uh, it's easy to manip to open and close with gloves. The Recon one have better grippiness and the handle is made all from synthetic uh, material, G10. Not a lot of metal. So if you have gloves and you encounter uh, 
uh, electricity wire. Uh, this place can also give, this one is aluminum, I'm talking about the Recon one, which is not. It's also dangerous, but if you have gloves, it's gonna be a bit easier. I don't think it's gonna be electricity knife uh, to use to cut electricity wire, but uh, high voltage, but it's definitely a good knife for $100, great grind, great lockup, great grip, um, easy access, even a linear hole. Uh, I recommend it very, very highly. Uh, value for the money, it's one of the best. Uh, I'm not talking about the, the Recon 1, not the code 4. ZT0308, uh, um, I like it uh, very much. It's one of the only that I would consider with bearings to take it because it has an ex extremely well made grind and it's important for me. 20 CV steel, bulky, good knife, uh, very good grip great action due to the bearings i know but you can get it with uh, uh, washers also a uh, good uh, flipper tab can open use it with gloves no problem it's a very well made knife good knife uh, titanium handle g10 really i like it uh, and if you want washers choose this one <laughs> uh, the lion steel uh, curl well, it also can be a good candidate, but uh, the wire clip uh, it seems a bit flimsy to me. It's strong, but flimsy, and it has uh, bearings. Otherwise, it can be a good candidate. Uh, it costs around 170 US dollars, but uh, the blade is really, really well made and good. It can be a good utility knife. Uh, just the bearings, they are the issue. The CVV. The CVV is a cheap 52 US dollars D2. I mean, uh, really good knife, simple, you don't mind to break it and buy a new one. Uh, bearings, and the bearings here is really, really exposed, uh, so I'm ruling this one out. This one, the Swayback. The Swayback, uh, I rule it out. It doesn't have bearings, it have washers, but I think one, the general shape is not that suitable. It looks too, it's not looks, so, it's very, very smooth and uh, I don't find it too suitable in the access to the to the opening. I don't know with gloves. It's it seems like you're gonna have a bad time with that. So I will this one out. Uh, the Vero Isotop. Well, I haven't learned this knife. I got it today, so I think it's gonna make a bit of time to consider or think about it. But have washers, so it's gonna be probably a no-no. And it's our uh, like 500 US dollar knife. We have over here the Reich, this Reich from 2017, washers, so it's a big no-no. And uh, it's a bit expensive, 240, something like that. Uh, it's what people would call, this is a tactical knife because it looks like futuristic and something like that. Now it has a nice grind and everything, and it can be a really, really good knife, good user, but for military use, I don't know, if you can take something without washers, then take something without washers. Buck 110, well, it's have its owner membership, but no, it's very heavy and very smooth. No bearings, but still heavy and smooth. The <coughs> Gamma Valence knife, expensive and they have bearings. And I think, uh, well, the blade is extremely thin, so it's very, very, it's excellent slicer. But the fact that it have bearings, if it was, if, if it didn't have bearings, uh, I think it was one of the best candidates. I'm, I'm reviewing this one, so I carry this one, these, those days, so I carry this a lot. And it's so, it's cut so wonderful. I mean, it's cut so well, and you can hold it like that and hold it like that. And just the bearings, and it's pretty expensive knife also. So, you know, so, uh, no, no, you have a, a better option. Uh, this one, well, only the smoothness of this uh, Stademon uh, South Sea ruled this out. Uh, not only, <laughs> the smoothness is enough to rule this one out. It's very, very slippery knife, so no, no military use. This one is dedicated military, armed forces, whatever. It's made by uh, Michael Janic, mm, Masters of Defense, so it can be used and it have washers and it's automatic knife and it's 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 from 2000 it's like 20 year old knife look how good it is i really like it so it's nice you can take it if you want 
this one is an excellent knife, uh, the Presidio 2. Why? First of all, stainless steel blade, great grind, washers, good, very good lock with the axis lock. The handle is very grippy, it's not weighing too much and uh, it's not that expensive, 160s I think. You can get it with a, uh, not a deep carry, but uh, the, the, the regular uh, clip and it will fit extremely well. So this is uh, also a recommended knife. Another one for the guys of you who like those sort of blade, this can be also good, but it's a bit scary. So uh, we don't want any people who will go to the Geneva Convention and say that you use uh, risky sadistic knives, but this one have washers, a very grippy handle made by uh, Mike Janich. Uh, it won't, it have a weak tip, okay? So it won't fit to hard use utility work. So think about that before you take it. The Sabanza, the Umnum Zan, sorry, it can be also a great candidate. It's expensive, like 500 US dollars, but it's very um, reliable knife, uh, easy to maintain, weight washers, good blade, great grind, great maker, ergonomics are fine, not too heavy. I mean, it's really nice. They have it up even for uh, a window uh, breaker and it's easy to maintain with those uh, Allen keys. Uh, the SRM Asika, well, I ruled this one out to reason slippery and it have washers. So otherwise it can be a great knife, but not for military use. No, I will start the black snow subvert. No, it's not. Uh, it's very heavy and uh, the blade heavy. It fails on you It have washers. No. A few more, I'll make it short. This is one of the best that the soldier can get. The Hinder XM24, I think it's wonderful. I think this one, this one with washers, it's, uh, it's excellent, have a great ergonomics. Uh, you can choke it, it has great blade grind. Heat rate is okay, it doesn't weigh too much, it weighs enough, you can secure it with the linear here. You can have a, a the carry not a um, bit shallow, so it's good. It's easy access. I mean, it's really good, uh, good model, and you can get it smaller. Another one. Uh, this is a, what I call a budget knife with washers, sort of a FRN or something like that handle, shallow carry, D2 steel, easy to to choke, 40 US dollar knife. Easy to use with um, with gloves, can be a great candidate. Use it if it's break, you don't care. Another one, the paramilitary two, also great candidate. Um, prices are range from 150 to 250 to 2 220 something like that. Use a stainless steel blade. You just need to take under consideration the the blade tip is a bit uh, thin. A uh, great lock with the compression lock, very light knife. It's one of the big, of the lightest knives here. Uh, excellent slicer, easy to open with uh, with gloves. I mean, it's a great model, easy to choke. Uh, one of the best, I think. And last one, I have over here more, but uh, I'll stop. The Leatherman. Well, the Leatherman. <laughs> Well, it's a multi-tool and uh, you have several, this one have several knives, several blades. You can have a saw, you can have, a, uh, you know, a plain edge, you can have a serrated edge and a wire, everything, okay, and, and the plier. It, it good for small tasks, you know, it... Uh, can do a lot. The biggest disadvantage that is bulky and it's heavy. So I hope uh, that one gives you my two cents uh, how I see what is suitable for as a military knife, aka tactical knife. You don't need to be called a tactical knife. Uh, this is not a tactical knife and it can be wonderful for a soldier. And uh, also, what I've seen here. Uh, oh, this one called tactical, okay. But uh, not everything that is named under the headline tactical is 
um, you need to look at the quality and look at the properties of the tool that you use and the environment uh, you use it and fit it to the budget. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, review. It took a bit time and that's it. That's it. So have a great day. Bye bye.